Well, hey guys, welcome to part four of the Predator Powered Mini Articulating Dump Truck Build. Here's a little minute recap on part one, two, and three in case you guys missed out on some of those episodes. Cutting down some frame rails to get started on the project. I'm using my CNC plasma table to cut most of the bracketry to hang the transmission, hubs, things like that. Um, cutting down some CV joints to narrow the stance. Keep in mind, all this running gear is out of an old Subaru Legacy wagon that I salvaged. I'm using my lathe quite a bit in this stuff to cut bushings and pins for the center joint. Cutting and modifying a lot of CV axles in this build. Here's that whole center joint and how the drive line's going to go through it. Welding up the whole rear frame assembly for this thing. All right, here comes part number four. Enjoy. So I took all the measurements of these bolt patterns here and I drew them up in Fusion 360. So I'm going to cut a plate here and one for the back and after we get those plates cut and then I'll take some measurements from the frame to the plate and then mock up the rest of the brackets for this. So we'll head over to the plasma torch and cut these things out. So this plate actually the mount points are lower than the center part of the diff so it peters back and forth can't be having that so I'm gonna go over the plasma table I got two parts drawn up and I'm gonna cut them out they're gonna be little spacers so let's cut those out next Now we're going to cut out the rear hangers for the rear diff. So here it is. Let's get cutting. That little CNC table is awesome. Just cut out the rear hangers, the rest of the parts I need for this. And this rear diff actually has some large studs sticking out of the back of it. So I'm gonna go over my lathe and cut out some little tubes as some washers for this thing. And we'll get welding this all up. One of the reasons I'm doing it in a few parts here like this is I want the center plate to be removable by bolts. It'll just make it a lot easier to take the rear end out and put it back in if I have to do any service work to this thing.
So I knew all these components were gonna be pretty shot back here and really rusty. The car I got was actually sitting for over a year and then these components have all been sitting on a pallet for over three years. So it was kind of a struggle to get these parts off of here. I might go through and rebuild all these brake components at some point, but I might just uh, rely on just the heavy duty front discs that are on the front of this machine and let all the braking go through the drive lines for the rear. Just simplify the whole build. Uh, one thing I would like to do though is do a hydraulic slash cable operated center drive line parking brake just because you need a nice solid parking brake on here. Later on I can uh, hook these things back up if I feel like it or if I'm happy with the braking through the drive line system. All right, let's tear these things out and get on with uh, the CB joint. got that CV joint all cut down and I got the edges beveled to kind of get a nice fill weld in there. I had about 20 people suggest I clamp it in a piece of angle iron and I had to use a really short piece of angle iron because this uh, shaft tapers up again shortly past this joint. I uh, got it all clamped here. We'll see how it goes. I kind of want to pull the boots off of here and actually drill uh, some holes in the center of each side of the joint here maybe three eighths of an inch diameter and put a pin in the center and weld it that way i don't have any more stainless steel clamps to hold these uh boots back on here so we'll give this a shot and if it works it's a lot easier All right, just a quick little update. I had to disconnect the rear end of this thing. Just mainly to finalize the location of this middle CV joint. Its center point is extremely crucial to the center point of the pins. And being inside that cup, the CV joint, it's really hard to tell where the actual true center is. So I just had to play around by moving it back and forth until it actually didn't bind up when I moved it. 45 degrees this direction and 45 degrees this direction. I'm really happy with the way that thing's lined up now and I got this back bearing I turned down on my lathe, tack welded on here. I may come back through here and TIG braze it all the way on. At this point now, I can actually cut this shaft down, put the rear end back on here and start working on the final drive line and should have all the drive lines completely finished on here. And then we're gonna move on to the mounting the motor, which would be pretty cool. All right, so I'm getting ready to make this short little drive line back here. And I was gonna draw up in Fusion 360 some 3 8 inch uh, plate that I was gonna cut into a disc here, but I was digging around my scrap pile, I don't have any 3 8 plate. I remember I have a bin over here with a bunch of old parts and pieces. I think I have some old uh, discs in that. I'm gonna see if I can modify. The reason is I wanna have a center line rear parking brake on this thing manual for sure and maybe hydraulic as well i think i'm going to get rid of the rear drums on the back and utilize just the front heavy duty discs up front there and maybe tie this one in so i'm going to see if i can find those discs in there modify that and we're going to start working on this drive line Uh, 
Well, got that all cleaned up on that lathe and that's good enough for this project here. All right, all I have to do now is transfer the holes onto here for the drive line and start building the drive shaft. Kind of strange i've cut a few drive lines down before i've never found them with a roll of paper in here must have been some type of dampening they put inside of this thing kind of strange seems like the weirdest thing to have in a drive line oh no way you know what this is it's a map to one-eyed willie's buried treasure hey i'm gonna get a hold of mike down at moto Mule. he lives in oregon we're gonna find this thing Now that we're finished up on the rear drive line, I'm pretty excited about moving on to mounting the engine here. Before I cut out some parts and pieces, I want to go over some uh, parts I ordered for this. I got a heavy duty centrifugal clutch. This thing's a 14 tooth, 40 pitch chain, and I went for a needle bearing clutch because I've dealt with bushing clutches on my sawmill and they kind of suck. So, got that. I'm going to be running a 60 tooth, 40 pitch sprocket. It should give me about a 4.2 to 1 uh, gear ratio. Talked to my buddy Kyle that I sold the engine to and he gave me the old clutch plate so we could rob the inner splines out of that for that sprocket. Got some 40 pitch chain and I'm pretty excited about this. I got this hydraulic pump given to me the other day from a forklift repair guy. It's off of a 24 volt electric forklift. It's actually a two stage. It's got a one circuit just specifically for a steering and another one for hydraulic lifts. This should actually do everything we need. I pulled the original seal which was weeping and I got a new one on order for five bucks on eBay. So hopefully that works out for us. Can't beat that price. It's going to mount somewhere like this. All right, let's go over to the CNC now and start cutting some engine plates. If you guys are interested to learn a little bit more about this Langmuir Crossfire plasma table I've been using in this whole build, there's a little link below in the description that will take you to their website which you can read up more on them. There's also a promo code in the description called Mike Festiva and if you use that in checkout it'll save yourself $100 and it gives me a little bit of a kickback as well so it's a win-win situation so if you're interested in a little bit more about these tables check out those links.
So before I can actually mount the whole engine plate right here, I need to still work out the front of the transmission and the bearing holder. So I actually know where the sprocket is going to sit to make sure the engine mount plate is in the proper location. So I'm actually going to go over to the CNC right now and I got some parts drawn up for a kind of a front guard for the transmission. And it's going to also hold this bearing up here for the snout of the transmission to support it. So let's go cut those parts out. Here's a piece of eighth inch I had sitting underneath my water table. And it rusted but in a pretty cool patterns and shapes. Kind of a little piece of art. We're going to cut it up anyways. We got our part cut out now. And we're going to see how it fits. Hopefully these holes line up. There's kind of complex design on this transmission for all these parts to fit. So the moment of truth. We'll see if my uh, drawings and measuring on all these odd shapes and angles here actually worked out. Oh man, it actually fits. That's pretty good. I'll bring you guys in closer to show you something. This plate had to go on here. It has to support the front bearing, but it can't be welded onto these. It can't be welded on here anyway, so you gotta get to the sprocket, do service. With doing anything like this, you gotta think like four steps ahead, and it's kind of a pain because you gotta make sure you don't weld yourself into a corner or make it so a part's not serviceable. I had to make these cutouts around here because I didn't want to share the same bolts for this plate as the main transmission bolts because I don't want to have to jack up the transmission, support it while I take this plate off. I want the transmission to hold on its own for taking this plate on and off. So I'm actually going to drill and tap these parts here to mount this plate to it. So, all right, let's get mounting this thing. So here I'm working on cutting a half inch hole through a five and three quarter inch shaft for the engine mount. It's kind of a boring job, but it's gotta be done. All right, you guys, so here's a little shaft I built and it's gonna actually hang off of some frame supports right here. And it's drilled and tapped on the sides and in the centers. It's gonna sit underneath this plate and there are gonna be some pusher bolts that hook into it to raise and lower the motor. The reason is I'm gonna make the motor pivot up and down a little bit is it's gonna be a much better system for tensioning the chain on here. Imagine you have the dry sprocket, you have the motor here. If I make it slide back and forth, it's not gonna tension it nearly as much for the amount of throw the motor needs. If I raise it up and down, it'll tension a lot better. If you're gonna tension it that way with the sliding plate, you're better off having your drive sprocket and driven sprocket in this direction to tension it. 
And another reason I wanted to raise up and down is I'm actually going to be mounting and building some plates off of here for a hydraulic pump to be powered right on the side of here. And when I attention the chain, I don't want it to affect the belt tension on the pump. So that's another reason. It's going to make a lot more sense when it's finished off, guys. Got some of this metal here. I'm gonna put a little link to a salvaging for cheap to free metal video I made a few years back over here. This is stuff I salvaged from a metal fab shop and they have a box break there and they do all kinds of interesting bends and all their scrap they just throw out in a bin. So I'm gonna utilize some of this stuff and actually do some gussets on those motor mounts so we can get this thing started soon. You know what this means? Yeah. All right, you guys, we're gonna fire it up. Don't worry, I got a door open over here and I got an exhaust fan running in the background and we're only gonna run it for like 30 seconds. I don't have the rear wheels on here right now. I got a little bit of finishing up on the rear CV joint to do. So we're gonna be able to see the power going through the front wheels and the drivetrain. Let's fire it up. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed part number four. We got a lot of stuff done. In the next video, I actually hope to finish up and get the rear tires on here. And we got the hydraulic pump. Hopefully it works, Let's cross our fingers on that one. And we're gonna hook that up and start working on figuring out how to do this hydraulic steering. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit like. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you get a chance, go back in my backlog of videos. I got a whole bunch of videos on welding and uh, lots of projects from sawmills to all kinds of stuff. So. Check out those videos if you guys get a chance. All right, till next time, take care, guys. Bye.